What's up everybody, welcome back to another video and I'm very excited today to do a little bit of a first impressions video of uh, Orchestral Tools newest library called Modus. So this library was made in collaboration with Jeff Russo who is a very prolific composer who has worked on many shows but I think most famously for Star Trek. Um, now, for me personally, I haven't watched Star Trek or Star Wars to, for that matter, so I'm kind of out of that loop. However, um, you know, when One Orchestral Tools mentioned this library to me and um, offered me a copy to to do a, like a video for it, I of course said yes. And um, knowing the stylistic flair that goes with putting a composer's name on a library like this, um, I was very excited to check it out. So. I have it downloaded here and I, I kind of want to go through some of the patches that stood out to me and play through some of them for you here. Um, so you can see here in the sign player, by the way, the sign player with its most recent updates, the, the playability and the stability has gone a lot better. So especially if you're a, a Logic user and um, I, I think there, there were some problems with some other DAWs as well, but more recently they've been uh, more stable. So if you go into the browser folder, um, it comes with the traditional uh, sections of the orchestra here, strings, woodwinds, and brass. And in addition, you also have uh, mallets and percussion at the very bottom there. But we also have choir and special blends that Jeff Russo requested, and then also a shakuhachi, which is a Japanese and Chinese uh, very ancient woodwind instrument. And this is, um, if you're curious on what that sounds like, uh, you can search up on YouTube, you know, shakuhachi videos. But um, there's also one that is in Jade, I think, Orchestra. Um, by stress of sampling. So this is orchestral tools take on the shakuhachi. I'm very excited to kind of play through that a little bit and test out the playability. Also a note here, um, by default, the spot mic and the tree mics load in, okay? Um, and if I, if I wanted to load in some more microphones, I could put in the uh, surround ones as well for a more ambient sound or for the spot ones. Uh, for a more close-up and detailed sound, but generally, I like to use a combination of the tree and a you know a little bit of the spot for that detail. But for the purposes of this video, we'll stick with mostly the tree mics only and the combinations when necessary, like here, um, spot and tree for some of these other instruments. Okay, so let's go through and first let's take a look at the high strings. So we go through the go through the structure here a little bit. High strings and low strings, they have um, essentially the same, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, articulations. So let's go through and hear what these sound like. Let's go to um, the Detache and Legato first. Now it's very interesting, um, for these high strings, and I believe the low strings as well, we don't actually get sustains with legato, we actually get detache with legato. So detache is basically kind of like a, a short note, if you will, like they play a note and it's detached and then they let go, you know? So the interesting thing is, if you want to play legato with this patch, you want to make sure that you trigger the second note while the first note is still relatively audible. If you wait too long, while the first note is decaying and then press the second note, it's gonna sound kind of weird when the second note just kind of jumps in at the end of the first note. So if let's do that again. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't sound bad, but it, it almost just sounds like, you know, one note is coming in and then the second note just immediately kind of jumps in after that. Um, but I think they've done a pretty good job with that transition, so. Uh, nothing really wrong there. And then, of course, the detaché uh, plural means you can actually play two notes at the same time or more. Right? Let's hear some of these other ones. I'm going to play through a little more, more here and just go through here. So. Okay, 
Now, I, I want to stop here because the practicality of a patch like this, the uh, performer overtones, is really interesting. Because um, if you can imagine, as you turn up the mod wheel, the uh, overtones of that particular note that you're playing are going to come in gradually, right? So like, it depends, I guess, on the scene or the context of your piece. But even just that playing just one note by itself will provide you plenty of um, options there. So at the bottom of the model wheel, it starts with just that note that's being played. And as you go up, you hear the octave, then the fifth, then the third, then the dominant seventh. So it just adds more and more colors, right? Um, so very, very pretty, but um, you don't want to do too many of those or else it'll, sound, it'll start to sound a little bit strange. Um, how about these ones here, the performer fifths? So there's a similar idea there, right? Turn out the mod wheel, you get more perfect fifths. Turn it back down. So now you only hear E and B, and then just an E at the very bottom. So E, B, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp at the top. Just a beautiful airy sound, That that's gorgeous. And then I'm, I'm assuming the cluster is the same thing, so you start with just the note at the bottom. Go up, you get a minor second above, F natural, F sharp, G natural, G sharp, and A. So they just add additional minor seconds on top, which is really cool. Um, atonal, well, this one's gonna be um, atonal. <laughs> So just if you want to rise that tension and all within one patch, that's really cool. Just imagine how much time this would save you. Instead of having to pull up like several string uh, patches and just going playing one note, extending that longer, and then bringing in the cluster note above that and extending that, and then another string patch, putting a note above that and so on and so forth. Here you can just pull up this patch, play one note and ride the mod wheel and it'll just activate that many notes as you continue to go up the mod wheel. So it's really cool. <clears throat> um, Let's hear the normal transition, or the transition from normal sustain to tremolo. I believe that's what it's good doing. Okay, that's really cool, right? So it's going um, down a whole step, down a whole step and into a tremolo, and then it's, it fades away. It like swells into it and then goes down a whole step. Very cool. And if you look along to the left here, this will determine the interval by which it goes down or up. So it was going down a whole step. Now if we, it can only go down a half step. So you can use that for spooky atmospheric things. I love this. Like for me, this is one of the standards of the library. You don't get many libraries that do this type of thing, I think. Let's hear what the zero transition sounds like. Yeah. Awesome. Trills. All right, let's go a little faster here. Let's hear the low flute ensemble. So these are the different articulations that it comes with. So just to show you the structure here, that was the strings. Then we have the woodwinds, low flute ensemble, clarinet ensemble, and bassoon ensemble. So you can see relatively the same articulations. Um, the low, f actually, some of them are kind of different, but like jet whistle bursts, we don't see those in uh, the clarinet or the bassoons. But anyway, let's have a listen to these low flute ensemble sustains.
Interesting. These overtones here, it sounds like as you get near the very top, the third of the chord actually disappears. So if, if I'm playing an F here, we hear the octave, we hear the third, that A, then the E flat comes in. So here's the whole chord, but if you push the module all the way up, the A disappears. I'm not sure if that was an intentional thing, but um, interesting that effect there. So if you want the effect of all four notes, make sure you don't go all the way to the very top of the mod wheel there. Right, so this is what we'd expect from kind of what like like what we heard from the first patch. All right, low brass. Let's go through these a little bit here. Um, fluctuations. That's actually really interesting. So here, it um, it really sounds like <clears throat> as you're pushing up the mod wheel, the actual timbre of the brass also increases as well. So it's not just the notes that are being added on top, you also get the brass starting to get more raspy as well. So a uh, really cool effect. I don't know if that is controllable. I don't think it is. I think that's just you know what comes with the patch. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's hear the choir. So I mean, Orchestral Tools has always been fantastic at sampling choirs and all instruments of that nature, but Let's hear a few of these articulations for the females. Yeah, so those those little fluctuations in the sustains really remind me of Time Macro and Time Micro when they actually, um, you know, sound like I think they call it uh, something like warping fifths or something. You know, like they they sing notes, but then other members of the choir will sing notes that are higher, some of that are lower. It really makes it kind of atmospheric and excuse me, really really cool. I mean, I don't have any library that does something like that. That is just gorgeous. And the fact that they sampled all of these intervals, that is just beyond me. I love that. I love that. All right. Now, this is something that was a big selling point, and I believe this is a direct reference to Star Trek. Um, I, I had to do a Google search. For, I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, <laughs> let's hear the Mercado for this Klingon choir. Klingon? Klingon? Choir? Okay, so this is for me, this is very similar to the Metropolis Art Choir, where um, your staccato syllables are on a round robin basis. Like they basically change every time you play the note. So they can create a, an effect of singing words or phrases um, with this choir. So beautiful, beautiful work there. All right, let's hear some piano and vi vi uh, sorry, violas uh, playing staccato.
Okay, so I got butterflies when playing that patch. I think that combination and the way it's balanced is beautiful. Um, just imagine like the, the the really romantic and colorful and round tone of that alto flute with the more subdued tone of the violas. It, it, like it's, I think it's a good choice that they went with violas instead of like v uh, violins, for example, because violins tend to have a slightly more um, higher frequency nature, right? And they, they cut through the mix a little bit more. The violas are a little more subdued, um, a little more full bodied in their in their sound. So I think it complements the alto flute pretty well. And they're, they seem like they're both playing kind of an MP piano type of uh, dynamic. So um, I love the uh, effect it has there. And, the, you know, it's very playable. The legato sounds fantastic to me. So anyway, contrabassoon and the basses. All right, let's get into the shakuhachi here. So the different articulations I've pulled up here are everything that comes with this patch. So we take a look here. So by the way, this is the Jeff Russo blends, the piano and violas, alto flutes and, uh, alto flutes and violas, and contrabassoon and uh, basses. So here are the articulations for both shakuhachi. Um, and the main difference here is that the high shakuhachi has the ornament, plus sustains improvisation and a staccato patch. Well, the low one does as well, but the low one also has its own improvisation patch, which I loaded up uh, right here. So let's have a listen to the high first. Just want to double check here. What would the molto vibrato sound like? So that high shakuhachi there was a mix of the spot and the tree microphone. Let's see what it would sound like if we used the tree and the surround only. So I'm expecting less detail, but a slightly more ambient sound. Now you hear some of those higher legato transitions, they kind of have this ornamentation to it, uh, which, you know, it's baked in with the library. I don't think those are switchable, like getting rid of those transitions. So, um, you know, whether you like that or not, it's, it's totally up to you, but just be aware that, you know, when you load up this patch, this is what you're going to get. For some of those transitions, you're going to get that nice characterful ornament. Um, so I believe, let's see. Actually, let's bring back in the spot microphone. I do want to hear the closeness of it. So that's just really cool. All right, let's hear the low shakuhachi. So the lowest note we have is the A below middle C. So some of those transitions were a little strong for me. Uh, I think uh, when, especially when I was on those lower dynamic layers, the legato was a little bit loud. So you can always turn the volume of the legato down. Um, 
which is always nice. And then no transition, I would assume that's kind of like more polyphonic. Okay, let's hear the improvisa improvisation. Oh, uh, oh, there we go. We have to click the right channel. Sorry about that. So you can imagine if you're scoring a scene and you need just this like sudden effect of this woodwind blowing uh, with a real, really um, realistic sound, then this is the one to go for. All right, then we have the marimba ensemble. So right now only the tree is loaded. Let's load in the spot as well. Very cool. All right, then we have the Celesta. Okay, this patch is fun to layer. So basically, when you whichever note you play, it has that bass note, but it also has the fifth above and the upper tonic. So the layering potential here is really cool. Right? Because none of the notes will really clash against each other unless you play notes that have um, minor second intervals between each other, you know? All right, almost there. Then we have the vibes and the glock. So the tail there is quite long, even with the spot microphone, but the detail is there as well. So just be aware not to play too fast if you're going for clarity in that patch with the vibes in the Glock. Um, and finally, the simple effects. Let's see what we got. So it's really interesting. These swells are not played at a, like a really loud volume, actually, right? They're kind of on the MP, MF side of things, even like piano, very quiet. I feel like that's the overall vibe of this library. It's, it's, it's more subdued, it's a little quieter. Yeah, especially with like a patch like Atmosphere, you're bound to have patches that are a little more ambient and quiet in nature.
Yeah, beautiful. I mean, I think as we come to expect, the recording quality of the um, like most orchestral tools libraries is very pristine, very clean. Um, you really hear the detail in the samples, even if you're using the far microphones, you really hear how the detail is in like baked into those samples. And I, I feel like they don't do very much processing, um, to the samples themselves to make them or like to enhance them in a very, uh, obvious way. You know, I feel like the samples feel very natural and very authentic. So for me, uh, Modus is probably the most unique, uh, orchestral tools library I own right now, in addition to like the time series, uh, of course their arc stuff is, is, you know, very, very solid as well, as well as the Berlin stuff, but, um, let's go, let, let me, let me go over some of the highlights for me of this library. So the strings, I mean, they have the basic articulations, but I think what's really cool is every single patch from the different sections that contain like the overtone stuff, the fifths and the clusters. Um, these are all really effective patches for you. If you're just trying to score a scene and you need that type of sweeping in effect that just uses, you know, it saves you a lot of time and just uses the mod wheel. Um, these give you a lot of options. The overtones give you a lot of color, the fists as well. So, and also these transitions, these really stood out to me as being something really special. Um, I just love how, nor how, um, sorry, how authentic and how realistic and how natural they sound. So, uh, really gorgeous. Um, the, the clean choir was also, uh, very punchy, very powerful. I really enjoyed that. And the way the alto flutes and violas blended together is just gorgeous. Um, and the shakuhachi, both of them, especially the high one, I really enjoyed the, the the playability and the sound of it. And the improvisation is just, again, a really cool uh, patch to use if you're just looking for something that's a little out of the ordinary and you want to spice up your production a little bit with kind of a woodwind effect um, with like an ethnic sound. I think this patch, the improvisation patch would do very, very nicely. And the percussion stood out to me as just being very, very cleanly recorded, very pristine. Um, and it, you know, like we always say, um, the best sound design and the best orchestrations and mockups come with very solid sample content. So, um, if the recording quality is very good and very pristine, then that gives the most realism it like mixing and, doing all sorts of um, tweaking to the sounds is all good and well, but it's not really useful if the original source material is not very good, you know? So I think that's one one thing that uh, Orchestra Tools does very, very well is the recording quality and the playability of their libraries, um, especially with the sign player. Now it's getting more and more playable and more stable with our, our DAWs. So Orchestra Tools is taking, a, um, you know, taking the sign player as a high priority and trying to make the experience better for all of us. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this kind of like first impressions of my, uh, or of Modus by uh, Orchestra Tools and Jeff Russo. Really appreciate you watching. And hey, if you're looking for some more of my library recommendations, by the way, I definitely recommend this library if you're into Star Trek and you like Jeff Russo's stuff, or if you're just looking for a library that has more unique articulations, interesting blends of colors and a playable shakuhachi. Um, by the way, this is, uh, I believe you can purchase individual instruments, um, upon the release of this library. So if you, if so, so, like if, um, some instruments stood out to you, but others don't, then you can just purchase the ones that you really like for a cheaper price, which is something also really cool that orchestral tools is doing. So anyway, I was saying, if you um, are interested in some more of my library recommendations, please check out the description box below. Um, I want to give you my sample libraries guide absolutely free. I talk about strings, woodwinds, brass, percussion, basically everything in there that I use on a daily basis. And I think it'll really help you when it comes to uh, looking for a new sample library to use in your productions. Um, it's uh, it's something I've put together absolutely free. So I'd like you to have it um, as, your, as your guide, you know, if you're looking for a new library. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and take care. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.